Greetings, my cheerful chariots. Glad we could discuss again about Mario Kart. As you can see, my design has changed. And depending on when this video comes out, it will either make sense or I have some serious explaining to do. So let's just discuss what today's matter of the video is. Wave 2 of the Booster Course Pass. It came out a long time ago, and as you can clearly see, I'm very much late to the party. But I'd say it's better to be fashionably late than to not show up to the party at all. Yep, that's my reasoning as to why this video has come out a year plus after Wave 2 officially came out. But before we get into the rankings, allow me to provide some background knowledge. Too many Wave 2 is one of the worst waves in the entire Booster Course Pass. Either because of the non-improvement of the visual graphics, or the fact that some of the city courses were... Let's just say not the best picks. But then again, many people consider Wave 1 to be the worst. Honestly, depending on who you are, you will probably say either one of these two waves is the worst. So now you're probably thinking, Ceresa, how do you view Wave 2? Well, it exists. I can definitely tell you that. A lot of the courses for this wave are... Definitely questionable, but I wouldn't say they're as questionable as Wave 1's choices. Seriously, Wave 1, Tootsucker, are you kidding me? But I won't keep this introduction going on for too long. Let's just move on to talking about Wave 2 and my rankings of each of the courses within it. Just like every other video thus far, if you haven't watched any of those yet, I highly recommend you do so. But not until you watch this one to its full completion as I'm sure it'll be worth it. Anyway, let's talk about Wave 2 of the Mario Kart 8 Booster Course Pass. <laughs> oh, whoops, uh, wrong file again. Let me put in the right one. It's a Seriously, Nintendo, how hard is it for you to constantly baffle everyone with the poor excuses of what is known to be a Mario circuit? Like, seriously, there's already two Mario circuits in the base game. And that's me being generous and not considering Mario Kart Stadium, and if I did, that'd be three. So why on God's green earth? Would you port over the most overused Mario circuit in the entirety of Mario Kart history? And then on top of that, make it the worst one! Whose decision was this? It's literally the worst decision you could have made! Cooper Beach, Ghost Valley, Choco Island, all of those fantastic SNES courses just shoved into the wayside just for a Mario circuit. You have got to be kidding. Okay, that's one reason as to why I don't like SNES Mario Circuit 3 all too much. Let me cite the other ones. Number one, it looks like utter garbage and doesn't look anything like the rest of the game does. I know the Booster Course Pass is known for having courses that look nothing like its base game counterparts, but oh my god does this take the cake for looking the worst one out of all of them. This does not even look like it belongs in the game. That's how bad it is. No, and then on top of that, the second reason I have for you is like I said prior. It is the most overused Mario circuit I have ever seen. It was brought back in Wii, it was brought back in Tor, it was in the fucking GBA version, and now it's here again! Nintendo, if you were going to pour over a Mario circuit, couldn't it at least been like 2 or 4 or something? That would have been far more better than fucking 3 out of all things! Oh, and don't even get me started on actually playing this with real people, cause oh my god it sucks! I don't know why, but out of all the courses I've played in my entire history, for some reason, Mario Circuit 3 hates me more than I hate it, because my luck on that course is just astronomically awful. But oh no, we gotta bring back that unrealistic 90 degree ass turn that it's in the fucking center of the stage, cause you know, we love our fans, you know. Honestly, this is tied with Toad Circuit for being the worst course picked for the Booster Course Pass. And it's definitely by far the worst course to represent the beauty and majesty of the SNES courses. I know some of you are laughing, shut up. 
But my god, literally out of anything, they chose Mario Circuit. And to this day, I still question why. Granted, I'm glad that they later fixed their mistakes by adding SNES Bowser Castle 3. However, there is no nothing on this planet that will ever fix Nintendo's stupid decision to add this repetitive of a course in the booster course pass. Hell, I'd argue it's the sole reason as to why Wave 2 for many people is considered one of the worst ones. But you know what? I think I've said my piece as to why I hate this course so much. So, we're just gonna move on to the next one, and rail on that one. Hey, uh, it's -a me, a Mario from Brooklyn. Where is the mama spaghetti? Yup, at number 7 is Tours New York Minute, and I will be very honest with you. Despite it being New York and being a city course at night, I don't like it very much. Yeah, it's kind of my opposite opinions when it comes to Moon View Highway and Rimavanti, considering how much I loved those courses in the past. And I still do. But something about New York Minute just does not work. I don't know if it's the layout, the textures. You know, on second thought, I'm looking at the floor textures. Yup, it's definitely the fucking textures. Yeah, out of all the city courses in the Booster Course Pass, this one definitely fails to hide its... Ugliness? Yeah, let's just go with that. Sure, there's good things in it, like driving through the Rockefeller Center and entering the underground garage to look at the Statue of Liberty for like, five seconds. But other than that, that's really only the notable thing that I can say about it. The music, at least in my opinion, isn't all the best. Like, sure, it's jazzy and I can see why someone would like it, but for me, I think it just overplays its part a little too much. And if you're wondering if I didn't like the tool version either, yeah, I didn't like that one either. For me, this one's just meh, really. Like, it's not inoffensive, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Cause, you know, Mario Circuit exists. But, once again, it's definitely not going in my top 10s or anything. So, I'll be fine with it existing, just don't pick it unless you want me to make a giant sigh of discontent. If anyone is wondering what the term lazy means when it comes to Mario Kart, I think it's easy to point to Mushroom Gorge in that aspect. I mean, seriously, Nintendo, it's one thing to not remix Waluigi Pinball's theme when it gets into the damn game, it's another to not even remix Mushroom Gorge at all. Considering that every game it's been in, the music has sounded exactly the same. Don't believe me? Here's its original sample in Wii. Now here's its original sample in 7! Now here's the original sample in Tour! And now the original sample in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe! Do any of you notice a change? Because I sure fucking don't. But besides that small nitpick, I really never liked Mushroom Gorge to begin with. It wasn't one of those tracks I had many interesting thoughts on. Like sure, the landscape is nice, it's famous for one of the most famous ultra shortcuts in Mario Kart Wii history, but other than that, I don't really care for it. I mean, to say that a Nitro Wii course is bad is a really high bar to set, considering that almost every single course that was originally in Mario Kart Wii as a Nitro is really good in comparison to everything else the series has had to offer thus far. So really, if Mushroom Gorge realistically was compared to any other Nitro course that has made its second appearance in this game, I'd say it's above average, if not just at the average line. I will say though, I am kind of surprised as to how this course came out, considering that usually when Nintendo decides to do mountains or cliffs or anything like that, the rocks tend to be... ugly as sin. But luckily Nintendo learned their lesson, and unlearned it a while later, 
but they learned their lesson here and chose to make the rocks grey, because someone at Nintendo probably thought, yeah, making the rocks yellow was maybe not a good investment choice. If only they knew that for Rock Rock Mountain and everything else. With that being said though, I feel like the mushroom section, or like the cave section in general was changed, because the mushrooms feel like they bounce you a lot farther than they should, and it's led to my death many, many times. I don't know if that was intentional, or maybe it's just me miscalculating my jumps, but that's just something to take notice of, because the Wii version never had this problem, and I don't think Mario Kart 7 had this issue either. Speaking of that section, that section is kind of a mix of the Wii version and the 7 section, because they have three routes instead of the normal two, which I guess is a nice change. It offers a lot of different complexity when it comes to route choices, but that's as far as complexity goes for this course, really. Yet somehow, this course is not the worst Wii course in this game. I wonder what course took that spot because of Nintendo's lack of foresight. Anyway, enough of the foreshadowing of other events. Let's move on to the next ranking. Oh, it's so unfortunate to see that I put this course in the 5th place spot. Yeah, in 5th place is Sydney Sprint, and I'm gonna be honest with you, when this course came out, I thought this was the best tour course that we were ever gonna get. Oh my, was I wrong. With that being said though, was it really good for the time that it came out? Yeah, practically. It was the best tour course that we've had thus far, and by tour, I'm in City, so don't get those too confused. Something about the route that this City course chose to make, and something about the music and all the locales just felt... It felt great, you know? But I also wasn't the only person on the planet who thought that putting it in the Boomerang Cup would have been very funny and very fitting. But oh well, I'm just glad we got it as soon as we did. Because at that point, all we had to work with was New York Minute, Paris Promenade, and Tokyo Blur. And I know damn well nobody liked any of them. So it was nice to see that we finally get a good city course for once at that time. Yeah, I have to preface everything I say with at that time because, my god, when I look back on Sydney Sprint, sure, it was like my most replayed tour course, but that was because it was the only good one. That was before Berlin Byways, Bangkok Rush, Athens Dash, Los Angeles Laps, Vancouver Velocity, Rome Avanti, and even Madrid Drive. It was before all of that. So it's kind of a shame that, in the grand scheme of things, this city course really doesn't amount to much, and it doesn't help either that Australia, no offense, is not one of the countries that I'm most fascinated in. I'm more so fascinated in all the European countries, because you know, bias. I don't want to say that this course means nothing, because I'm sure this course means something to a lot of people, just as many of the other city courses mean something to everyone else. I'm just saying though, in retrospective to myself, and in comparison to everything else, it's not as good as I remember it. It's solid, don't get me wrong, but it won't be going anywhere anytime soon. But enough of the constant beating down, let's move on to the next one. Ah, it feels great not being shot for putting Waluigi Pinball anywhere that isn't first. Oh, Sarissa, I cannot believe this is happening to you. Here are my final words. Waluigi Pinball is not as good as everyone says it is. Oh, oh thank god she's dead. I don't have to care about her dying anymore. Time to head to a Tesco. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, even though I remember playing a lot of DS as a kid, you'd think I have more nostalgia for this course, hence I would bump it up a little higher, but no, not really. All I can really say is that the entrance portion of Waluigi Pinball is very nice. It just feels super satisfying to get launched throughout the cannon section. And that's about it, really. Considering that it's a lot of tight turns, especially in 150, and the fact that you rarely see the balls half the time, most of them are in the main stage itself. Really, there could have been a lot more done with the premise. It could have been a lot more flashier than what we actually got. 
And that's really saying something considering that the tour version of Waluigi Pinball, which is the one that we got for a deluxe, is the flashiest one out of all the Waluigi Pinballs that we've had. But I don't know, a, a few things just don't feel right. For starters, I'm not a fan of the fact that they decided to use the same music for Wario Stadium for Waluigi Pinball. Like sure, they share the same music, but they go for completely different vibes. So when you try to enforce the vibe that was in Wario Stadium into Waluigi Pinball, it just doesn't feel right. And it's super weird because they already had a remix of Waluigi Pinball in Smash Brothers that gives the Waluigi flair. So I don't know why they didn't just use that. But on top of that, certain sound effects tend to be missing. And no, I'm not talking about the item box, no 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 no, that is perfectly fine. What I am talking about is that every time you go through the tunnel at the end, there's supposed to be a sound that rings like this. However, in the a deluxe version, this is what happens. What the hell? Yeah, can you understand that people were upset? Now, I'm not saying these things are really a big deal because it doesn't remove from the fun factor or anything but it would have been nice to have them, and it would have bumped it up a few points if it did. In other words, I'm content with having it at fourth. It's a fun time, don't get me wrong, it's just not one of my favorite DS courses, especially when I was rooting for other DS courses to get in. Then again, I am a fan and connoisseur of DK Pass, so really, what right do I have to say that Waluigi Pinball isn't fun? However, I feel like I hear the voices of the top three calling to me, so let's probably get to that before I start hearing other voices instead. Now before I go into depth on Sky High Sunday, allow me to preface this. The top three are courses that I really, really like. Honestly, trying to figure out which course went in one spot was very hard to narrow down to. So I'm just gonna say that all of these three are my favorite. Basically any one of these could have been number one. It's just that some of them had one slight edge over the other, and that is why they're in the positions that they are. But don't get it twisted, I really like these. So at number three we have Sky High Sunday. And, I'ma be honest, unlike most of the Mario Kart community, I actually like this course. Yeah sure, let's talk about the one glaring issue of Sky High Sunday, and that being the Oval. Yes, like Baby Park and Excite Bike Arena, Sky High Sunday has the same layout as those two courses, being an Oval. However, I have one thing to say as a rebuttal to everyone who says that's the issue. It's a fun Oval. Like, come on guys, can we really give Baby Park the pass when it's literally just a smaller oval with nothing to do inside it? No tricks, no really anything to do, just pure chaos and just praying to god that you make it to first. So at least in Sky High Sunday there's enough room to be made where there's glider segments, there's tricks, and on top of that, there is a lot of damn sweets! Now another complaint I've heard is that a lot of the rails that are used for boosting in the anti-graph section really don't make any sense, and yeah I'll agree to that one, it really doesn't make any sense. It's kind of weird how this is the only one that doesn't have those anti-grav booster segments, instead they're just rails that so happen to boost you if you touch them, which is very weird. Another complaint I've heard is that the whole course is anti-grav, when it probably shouldn't be, and if anything that's more so a nitpick than an actual argument, considering that anti-grav for the most part all it affects is whether or not you're able to go farther when you jump. And frankly, if this course did not have anti-grav, we wouldn't be able to pull off some of the maneuvers that we are able to. Oh, but let me get to the freaking music. It is a marvel to listen to. I love Sky High Sunday's music. In fact, if you ask me, it's like if you took Sweet Sweet Canyon and only made the entire course about ice cream. It's the best! It's Sweet Sweet Canyon, but better. Now something I like to point out though is that for some reason in the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe version, there are no penguins, like at all. 
Considering that in the tour version, there was penguins as bystanders just chilling out in the freezer section. So it's kind of weird how they just magically chose to not include them in the A Deluxe version, when the assets were right there. But you know what? It's whatever at this point. Another thing I'd like to point out is the skybox, and I will say... It's a little weird. But then again, that's the booster course pass for you, and we were only at wave 2. So really, nothing is ever a marvel. But yeah, I have hardly any negative thing to say about this course. I really do love it. In fact, if I had to rank all of the Nitro courses, Plant Cove would be number one, and then right behind that would be Sky High Sunday. I just love it that freaking much. But that's enough said, as I've run out of good things and praises to say about Sky High Sunday. On to the next triumph. Ah, Calamari Desert. A land of emptiness yet full of meaning. Allow me to be honest with all of you for a second. When I first heard of Calamari Desert back when I played Mario Kart 7 all oh, so many years ago, I really didn't like it all too much. It was a bad desert, the music really didn't hit me all the same, and I really didn't have any appreciation for the course at all. And considering that I only played Mario Kart 64 literally only last year, I really didn't have any nostalgia for Calamari Desert at all. However, when I first played it in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, a new appreciation for it just swept over me like a tsunami in a coastal city. Like, something about the music, the lighting, the textures of all the rocks and the plateaus, the train, everything just culminated together for me to finally realize, holy shit, this track is actually good. I will say it now and I'll say it forever with glee. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the reason why I love Calamari Desert so much, and it's partially why it's one of my favorite N64 courses to this day. It won't be beating Banshee Boardwalk anytime soon, but I can say for certain it's my third favourite. Plus, another thing I'd like to add is that I always knew that people love talking about how you can drive on the tracks in the original N64 version, yet you can't in the Mario Kart 7 or Tour version. However, that all changed when Nintendo finally gave us the opportunity to drive on the tracks in the second lap of Calamari Desert. Granted, I think it's a little weird that it chose to make a huge ramp just to get on the tracks when all you could do is literally take a left, but I'm not complaining, I'm just glad we got it. Granted, it's a little funky because if someone's on the first lap and someone else is on the second, all you'll see is someone randomly floating in the middle of nothing. Yeah, Nintendo really didn't think about this one all too much. But besides that though, Calamari Desert is a really fun course, and it surprised me with how good it is. And I'm just glad to say that I can finally say that I have this as one of my favorites of all time. Thank you, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. You did something good. You weren't expecting this one to be the number one. But guess what it is? It's GBA Snowland, so get screwed for all it's worth. Yup, at the number one spot, it's none other than GBA's very own Snowland. The one GBA course that everyone hated because of... Earthquakes. And now everyone loves it. Probably. Maybe. Okay, maybe they don't like it that much. But who cares about everyone else, am I right? This is my list. And it's about me. So sit back and be prepared as to why I like GBA Snowland so much. Number one, it's from the GBA. Literally, I have a GBA bias for no particular reason. I never grew up with the GBA, yet for some reason, you'd think I probably would have considering how much favoritism I give the damn game. I don't know why, but I have a tendency when it comes to video games to support and cheer on the unappreciated one. And when it comes to the Mario Kart series, there's no other Mario Kart game that goes unappreciated than Super Circuit. Number two, snow themed levels. I absolutely adore snow themed levels. Why? Because most of the mechanics and most of the looks and the music always complement each other when it comes to snow themed levels. Hell, even the worst one being Vanilla Lake, at least you can say the music is good and it complements the theme. If you think I will ever acknowledge your existence, you are funny. 
And one of the last reasons I have to provide as to why I think Snowland is the best when it comes to Wave 2 is for one simple reason. The shortcut. Specifically the shortcut that's near the beginning of the course, where you're passing through the line of trees and heading into the turn that leads into the frozen pond. Essentially, if you have a mushroom, you can skip that entire turn, and if you pull it off, you will feel like a boss. And if you don't, well then you'll just feel like a loser. Granted, it's not as iconic as like the DK Summit shortcuts, but I'd say it's pretty satisfying to pull off. Especially considering that there's not many shortcuts in the booster course past the name. I mean, for crying out loud, just a while ago everyone was making a big deal about the fact that you can now make shortcuts on Berlin Byways. I think by that point you can understand why people are desperate for shortcuts. So yeah, in other words... Great track! But yeah, if you have any of your own opinions you want to spam in the comment section, you surely can do that. And make sure to like, share and subscribe as it does help with the channel if you want to see more content just like this. And trust me, in the future, knowing my channel record, you probably will get more like this. But with everything out of the way and everything wrapped up to its conclusion, my name is Cereza Valentine, and stay cheerful. <laughs>